So this is the second or third, third, third video in this series looking at the aqueous ions. This is going to look at both the iron two and the iron three ions. Hard that iron and ion, iron ion. Anyway, two of the price one in this one. Um, you may think initially, oh god, that means it's going to be more work. There's actually not. This is one of the easier ones actually. They they killed off in the change of specification, which depends at what year you're watching this. That could be like, you know, a thousand years ago. Um, they killed off chromium and cobalt, which were quite interesting. There was loads more going on. So they got rid of those. So actually they, they left three ions, basically, three elements. Quite simple. Copper's actually the most difficult of the three of them, and it's not a huge amount there. These two though, iron two and iron three, nothing really much at all. Um very similar to the rest really in that they are both um, octahedral complexes. They both for the uh, the hexa aqua complex, uh, and we've got Fe H two O six two plus, and of course we have three plus variety. In terms of colours, this one here, green solution. This one, the three plus, is going to be a yellow solution and I said both these are octahedral complexes similarly to what I did before switching it around over here slightly the reaction with hydroxide and ammonia by this point now you're hopefully picking up on the fact that there is a huge huge amount of similarity between all of these and people initially think this is a really difficult topic because there's so much to learn and actually if you're very clever and I, I may do a video that compares all all of the reactions if you're very clever with it it's very very easy to pick up on the trends and to actually cut down on a lot of the learning you've got to do um, the reactions I'm not going to write them all out uh, but we've got the FAH2 I'll start with the iron 2 uh, we've got 6 there 2 plus We'll do this one with hydroxide, uh, and I'll do the 3 plus with ammonia. Because um, this is officially the first video where I've actually done the actual named transition metal 3 plus ion. Um, going across though, it's very almost identical to the to the copper reaction. We're going to end up with the fact that it's a 2 plus gives us the H2O4 OH2. Uh, and over here we end up with the uh, H2O3 OH3 solid in both case precipitates formed uh, and we end up with water in this one and in this one of course because it's ammonia we end up with the ammonium ion balance that up correctly note that you obviously have slightly different balancing going on the two versus the three there you could switch these equations around this one could be with the ammonium in which case you'd produce ammonium ions with two and two I don't want to go through every single example because it's just time consuming and quite honestly I feel like people can probably do that themselves. Colour is the most important one. The colour will be there. This this same product is produced here or here independent of whether it's hydroxide or ammonia ions, um, ammonia molecules, sorry, hydroxide ion or ammonia molecules that are being used. Here we're going from green solution. The colours are quite easy as well to uh, an amazing green precipitate. And over here we go from a yellow solution to a beautiful brown, sort of ready brown uh, precipitate there. Uh, essentially iron hydroxide is essentially the colour there. So yeah, dark sort of browny red. Brown's what seem, textbooks seem to say though, so we'll stick with that. Reactions done. Um, there is no excess reaction with ammonia or with hydroxide you have to worry about. So the only other one I'm going to stick in really before looking at the carbonate ion is this thiocyanate ion. I've seen it written down occasionally, so I think it's quite nice. And plus the colour that you get produced is, is great. It's, it's fairly awesome. So H2O, and this is only going to react with the 3 plus ion, SCN minus. And what we produce is this partially ligand substituted FeH, and it's also nice to see a different kind of reaction occurring. Changes slightly because it's a minus ion, we end up with a 2 plus ion there, and a water there, which is fine. Um, Colour wise, we're of course yellow solution, and then we end up with what I think is just amazing blood red. So that's a little bit dark actually, isn't it? I probably shouldn't get that keen about that. Blood red solution. Um, simple reaction switching across 
this is one of those, you know, there's no reason this couldn't be sort of an application style question where, you know, you're given a bit of information. All that's happening is a bit of power substitution going on. We're switching the water for this thiocyanide SCN minus ion. Taking it down then, and I've got one exam question. There's barely anything. I'll come on to that in a second actually um, after this. But this is almost the end of the video now. Uh, with the carbonate ion, we've got two to look at this time. So we've got the Fe H two O six two plus, and of course the Fe H two O six three plus. Both reacting with sodium carbonate, potassium carbonate, whatever carbonate ion. Remember, this is one where we have the direct. There's no reason a question couldn't ask on this one. Why do these two react differently? That's the key bit because we've got the same transition metal. So why would there be a different in acidity? And again, remember, as to my previous video, the reason for it is the fact that the iron three plus ion has a higher charge to size ratio. Therefore, it's more polarizing. Therefore, it causes the hydrogen ion within the water molecule to be more easily lost, changing the reaction. And therefore, this would have a lower pH. It would be more acidic. So rather than this little swappy swap that goes on there, very straightforward, uh, solid, um, and this is going to be, colours are ridiculously easy. We get a slightly different reaction occurring here, where we form that intermediate, kind of, the OH minus NH3 one, which is the H2O3. OH3, look at that, perfect. Um, remember, we end up here with, oh no, I'm confusing with another one. Balance this up correctly. We're going to produce 3CO2 and 3H2O. Nicely done. That's literally it. There's nothing there. It's so, 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 so brief. Looking through every paper that I've got, that's 2010 onwards, and there are obviously previous papers as well, but looking through all these sort of modern papers, if you like, uh, 2010 plus, um, there's barely any questions on iron. Now, that could all change. Uh, the specimen paper, certainly the first set of specimen papers that have been released, uh, nothing on iron on that. Could be on paper three, I didn't actually look. Um, probably should have done. But the nothing on paper one, which is where it should appear as part of the thermodynamics and inorganic and stuff. So nothing on there at all with iron again. So very, very misrepresented uh, in the in the long run. However, I do have an exam question. It's quite a nice one actually. Uh, so here it comes. I wish I had a fanfare everywhere I went. Anyway. A, an excess of dilute ammonia, this is from about 2014, I think, I can't remember the year, something like 2014. Uh, an excess, and this is the old specification as well, should I add, uh, and again, an excess of dilute ammonia solution is added to an aqueous solution containing iron, two ions, in a test tube that is then left to stand for some time. State and explain what you would observe. Well, we'll stick some equations down here because I do love a good equation. So, initially, and it's asking to state and explain what you would observe, so statement, so you would have, of course, I don't think equations are required here, but if, we, if we're going to go whole hog, and it's nice from a sort of recap perspective, uh, we've got ammonia, so we know that we're going to go to this H2O4, OH2, plus, of course, the ammonium ion, 2 and 2. Colour-wise, state what you'd observe. So just give statements. Green solution would become a green precipitate. And then what's happening here, it says, in a test tube that is left to stand for some time. Well, any question that implies that really is looking for the idea of oxidation occurring, uh, things being left out in the open, uh, oxygen getting in and oxidising. And a classic one within redox equilibria as well, a classic one is... Is essentially the iron uh, two plus. Um, you would use manganate, for example. You could use dichromate, although that's a bit of a dodgy one to titrate against. You can use uh, the manganate to oxidise the iron and therefore reduce the manganate. Um, and the same is true of oxygen. It will oxidise the iron. So what actually happens is this this iron here, the Fe two plus, becomes the Fe three plus. Which, bear in mind, 
the FE3 plus version of that, which is the H203 OH3, is a brown precipitate. So state what you see. Well, I would see a green solution turn into a green precipitate, which would then become a brown precipitate. Okay, well, why? Give a reason. Explain what's it. Because, upside down, the oxygen oxidizes Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. Done. That's the lot really for iron. Very, very, very short, very, very limited there, not a huge amount to it at all. Um, again, any problems, hit me up on Twitter, do leave comments if you want, I might not get back to you. Uh, I might do, it depends how easy it is to see them. Uh, otherwise, though, I hope that has been of some help. Uh, and there you go, iron, the aqueous ion.